And we're live. I realize that I can adjust this light down just a touch, which oh. will will be nice. So we're not blinded. I hope everybody is having a great day. It is Sunday. You could go somewhere, but why would you? So, the goal of this, I guess, I really just wanted to hang out with the people that watch our videos. Okay. And Leslie used to, ah, uh, crap, hang on. Air of course, the air conditioner kicks on. It's loud. As we get started. The perils of living in an RV and trying to do a live video. So, <clears throat> and what's really funny is I posted about wanting to do this. And somebody's like, don't make that content because you're just good at making guitar content and nothing else, or more or less. And I was like, that's... don't make what content? Don't. Don't make a con don't make any content that's not about guitars because guitars is what you're really ab about. Ah. You know what I mean? And I guess that's the whole point of wanting to just hang out with people because I think there's more of like mind, you know, like we're all drawn to each other over the subject that the YouTube channel is about, right? But I'm sure there's way more to talk about than just that. And I'm not saying we're not allowed to talk about guitars tonight. That's too probably asking a little too much. But uh, just to get to know each other, you know? Um, we used to do this thing every Monday night, right? Mm -hmm. Where Leslie would sit in and she would actually... I wouldn't see any of the feeds and stuff. And she would sit there and, you know... Um, so I, I guess the first thing we should do is put in the comments what you're drinking... If it's water, that's okay. If you don't drink, that's okay. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm drinking's not the point, but um, oh, it's not. Why am I here again? Well, uh, what did somebody say that the COVID nineteen stay at home thing has taught us that we don't have to have fun to drink? Uh, but we're having fun tonight. <laughs> we're just hanging out. Oh, we have a lot of non drinkers. Well, that's okay. No, that's For great. For sure. Yeah, that's great. And um, but I'm I've got a, a what is this? I got a twelve year Bowmore uh, Scotch. Well, I got a little bit left. Um, that I'm going on right now. That was a big pour. I almost poured it on myself. Well, I did that on purpose so you wouldn't have to get up in the middle and have to <laughs> refill. Right? I mean, red wine. Uh, what is it called? It's a funny name. Rumpus. <laughs> is it? Is it a cab or what is it? Is it yeah. a must be a cab because you're into, into the cab um uh mike ivy says mrs Ta hello mrs talk tone uh nope i'm not a smoker actually i've never so a lot of people don't believe this when i tell them random fact number one of the live stream uh i have never smoked a cigarette ever in my life that includes like when your kids and like somebody will steal a cigarette or they'll like, you know, a cigarette butt or something, you know, that sort of thing. I've never even tried it. I remember skateboarding with my friends and like somebody wanted to try it and I was like, no, I'm out. I just it was a thing I've never been into. No smoking of anything. Cigarettes, weed, nothing ever. Never, ever, ever did any of it. Um somebody said smoking's the best um so yeah yeah it's uh it's been a thing late to the party ooh cheese pizza dang ordering out some good stuff um one of the things i'm curious about to the obviously privacy is a thing so i respect that but i am definitely curious um, and you can give me a range, obviously as specific as you comfortable are comfortable. I am one of the things I'm always curious about is the age 
and um, kind of the demographic, like where are you from? Um, you can just say, you know, state and country or whatever, you know, you don't need to get specific. Uh, like I said, I recognize privacy. Um, and and how old are you? You know, within five or ten years. Like, let's, I mean, not get too specific and personal here, but it's, I'm always curious because um, guitar stuff tends to, to lean a little bit older. And I've found that our channel is starting to come down a little bit in age. Like, um, the 25 to 34 demographic is growing. Um, our female demographic is actually up to two or three percent which is huge because we were like 0.5 percent for years um yeah years so let's see shreveport i have family there do you mm -hmm. oh yeah i know we have a lot of ontario um we've got a couple of people and are I they saying their age i feel like we just started like a dating website oh we did it's like uh, hey i mean Florence, if, something, Kentucky, 48. if something happens <laughs> in our uh chat on our live stream you that know a so couple funny. years later or something i want to know about it like hey you know we met in dylan's live stream i missed cool. something if you um, i didn't mean to if but you said they should drop their age in there i did say did you? Yeah, I did say oh. put their age in there. I was oh just curious. Gosh. Somebody said swipe right. <laughs> exactly, right? No, nah, that's really cool, man. I just, I like to know where people are from. I'm always excited. I'm really, really excited, actually, uh, that our Patreon, I see a couple of you in here uh, that are on our Patreon, and I, I'm really excited uh, to see how international the audience is. Uh, a little fun factoid for you all. Um, hang on, I haven't even taken a sip of this. Falling behind. The fun little factoid for you all, over 50% of our audience on YouTube is not from the United States. Um, so like even with these contests and stuff, that's why I wanted to open it up a little bit more and give away some other stuff. Um, I know we're not supposed to talk about guitar stuff, but... something came in today that we're going to give away. Uh, and the reason I, I bring this up, even though we're not supposed to talk about guitar stuff, is because I am so grateful uh, as our audience grows. I, th like, this is something I did not ask for. Um, do you remember when I did a survey and it was like, the Patreon was just getting started and I was like, I can either afford to buy EMGs or Fishman Fluences and give it away, but I can't afford both. This was probably like two months ago. A viewer, I believe from Belgium, and if I get that wrong, I apologize. This is coming out, we're gonna talk about, you'll see this again in tomorrow's vlog, but ordered a set of EMG Zach Wild pickups, full set, the whole deal, and sent it to me. I just got it today because COVID-19 slowed everything down and we couldn't get it forever. EMG like stopped everything. And so it took a long time to get it, but it just came in. Um, and he's like, just do what you're going to do. And then that way, now you can give away both of them, which I was like, I am just so grateful like that kind of stuff is happening all the time and we're getting like people send us pickups to, to cut up and I don't know it's just getting fun like the community I've, I love that part of it um, and I'll tell you another little thing and you'll you'll see it here in a few days in the vlog but um, in my monthly video thing but um, and stop me if somebody wants to say something that I'm, I'm missing um, oh, we're going to scroll up because there was a really good question. Okay. So finish your thought. Um, okay. But the other thing that happened is I borrowed a guitar for the whole humbucker Fishman Fluence deal. And the owner of that guitar called me the other day and he's like, 
Actually, I kind of like those. He's like, why don't I just buy that set, send you the money, and then you can buy another set to give away. And I was like, sweet. So, I, I don't know, just that sense of community that I love. I know I get some people that are like, all he cares about is money. But it's, as you can see, because all we're doing is buying this junk and testing it and giving it away. Um, that's what it's for, you know? So it's really fun. I'm super excited uh, to be able to do it. Okay, what was, what, what was the question? All right, so a 30-year-old from Texas. Thank you, Jason. how they introduced himself. Um, but he has two questions. What were you doing before full-time guitar stuff? And what made you decide to do guitar full-time? Um, okay, so uh, before I was in guitar, I had a cell phone repair company in 2009. Well, in 2007, I got hurt really bad in my previous profession. I broke my back in four places. Um, and I pretty much retired at that time. I sold out of that company. That was a power sports company. I rode motorcycles for a living all through the 2000s. Um, I sold out of that. I got in it and I didn't actually work for a couple of years because I was really, really injured. Um, they gave me a 3% chance to walk. I broke my back in four places. Uh, in about 2008, I dropped my cell phone and I broke it. I had an iPhone 3. And I was like, you know, we should figure out how to fix these things. And I literally translated a video from Chinese because that was the only place you could get parts and that was the only people doing it. And I started one of the first cell phone repair companies in the United States. We ended up having a couple of locations. We hired some people. Uh, we had a mail-in service. So it was one of the first mail-in services. Um, where you could mail your phone in and have it repaired and you know that sort of stuff um i did that for a couple a few years and right about the same time i started that one of my buddies called me uh actually i'll tell you who it was it was jimmy soldo from jersey shore guitar garage you hear me talk about jersey shore guitar garage.com all the time they make great wiring harnesses and stuff um, I said I wouldn't plug a bunch of my own stuff tonight, so I'll plug his stuff instead. It's really, really cool. Um, check it out, jerseyshoreguitargarage.com. Um, Five-way tele harnesses, Les Paul stuff, like all that kind of stuff. You'll hear me talk about him from time to time on the channel. He called me one day, and he's like, you know, you were working on, I was working on this, just on the side, I was working on this wah pedal circuit, and... Um, that never really came to fruition. He's like, you know, you, you do all this stuff and you're really smart about this stuff. Have you ever thought about making pickups? And I was like, you know, I've dabbled in the science of it. Um, but, and I know I've been doing electronic stuff and building guitar stuff and doing this stuff since I was a little kid, but I've never thought about doing it as a profession. And then, so I started, um, our first set of pickups was a Strat set. Uh, then we made a Tele set. No, I apologize. Our first set was a Strat set. Our second set was the Center Punch Humbucker. Uh, our third set was the DAF Humbucker. Um, and then our, then we did P90s, and then we did Tele pickups. And, of course, the rest is history. But, um, yeah. So that, that's it. I mean, it was that it just kind of happened. And then, of course, you know, you got these pickups and people are starting to play them and, you know, they're kind of getting around. And then all of a sudden somebody says, hey, could you build a guitar with my name on it? Um, and to back up, there was a guitar brand out of New York that called me. And that's actually what happened is... This Jimmy called me and said, hey, you need to build, build pickups. And I was like, okay. So I started building pickups. Then he called me again. And he's like, hey, there's this brand of guitars out of New York uh, that I no longer deal with. But uh, at the time, he's like, this brand of guitars out of New York, 
I'm supp supplying all their wiring and you need to make their pickups. So then I collaborated with them for a while and then kind of grew beyond that, started my own stuff. Next thing you know, we're building guitars and we're building, you know, 20, 30 a year or so. Um, the guitar thing is never really like a super serious thing, like building custom guitars. It's just something that I loved. And since I was a little kid, I always dreamt of having a guitar brand with my name on the peg head. So we will never stop building guitars. We have scaled it way back because of our mobile lifestyle, but that's kind of the short, long story of it. What else did I miss? While we're talking about pickups, uh -huh. what's the difference in the center punch and the DIFs? Okay, so um, the center punch it came about because I wanted to, s to make a pickup that when you split it, the volume didn't drop. And that's what we did. So that pickup is designed specifically for, uh, not specifically, it's called the center punch because it's got nice mid-range. The idea behind that pickup is it's a little bit hotter than a, a normal PAF. When you split it, the volume does not drop. So it works really, really good anytime you're going to split it. But I really like to put it in like a single, single hum setup. Um, neck pickup of a telly, for example, works good. Um, it works everywhere, but especially if you're going to split it. Um, as an extension of that, before we get to the DAF, the eight ball is the same thing as the center punch. It's the same wine, wine technology. It's the same everything, except that it is a ceramic pick uh, magnet instead of, and the, the wire is a little bit different, but it's the same concept as the center punch, but it's got a ceramic magnet instead of an A5. The DAF came about because I had a client who wanted Basically, well, the DAF is our PAF. That is our, you know, throwback and all these people make like really period correct vintage spec PAFs. I do not like using plain enamel wire. It is a pain in the butt. I do not like rough cast magnets. I am, I hate braided wire like braided humbucker wire and i got it in my head one day that i was going to make a humbucker that sounded just as good as all of those vintage spec ones but made with modern parts that you could actually get that you could actually afford and they wouldn't cost as much as like a throwback or something but they would be just as good and so um it was kind of I don't want to say it was a jerk move, but it was literally like, I'm going to do this because nobody else, everybody gets so stuck on all this vintage stuff. And I'm going to prove that you can make a good sounding PAF with modern parts. And that's what our DAF is. And it is amazing. It is unbelievably good. Um, and the DAF name <laughs> was Jimmy's idea. Dylan applied for. Yeah. That was that was his idea. Um, so I didn't know. So back in the day, you were about earlier, you were going to talk about the show we used to do together and the air conditioner came on. But I remember when we did that show together, you know, we had some pretty consistent people that tuned in and mm -hmm. chatted. Um, so BC Rich was one of them. Yep. I did not know. He just said something. Oh, he's on? I did not know that he originally found you because he bought your dad's book and then did a search and found your YouTube channel. And he said it took him a while to even figure out like it was a connection. Well, the connection and that it wasn't the same person. He just, you know, the last name probably, but I didn't know that's how he found you. Wow. I didn't right. know that either. That's really cool. Uh, so those of you who don't know, um, which is probably everybody except for BC rich, um, and maybe a couple others. My dad is. A <laughs> Tom said he would say DAF stands for Dylan AF. Heck yeah, that man. works too. That works too. Um, my dad is a phenomenal jazz player. Uh, when I was a kid, he 
when I was a kid, when I was like three, five, three to five, six years old, we had a, um, we lived in Washington State at the time, and we had a recording studio, and he played professionally and toured and did all the stuff, and he's jazz. He plays jazz. He's really, really good. Um, and he got out of the music business for family focus, I guess, is really the, the thing. And it was one of those things, he's like, look, if I would have stayed in the music business, I probably would have ended up dead, you know, overdosed somewhere, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, just that whole thing. Because it was the 80s, right? Like, the 80s was rough. And so um, I, uh, I never really played professionally as a kid or grew up playing professionally, but I did spend a lot of time in the studio. And that's why I tell people to this day, and people will laugh, and I'm not that great of a guitar player or whatever, but um, I'm better at making you sound good than making me sound good. Like, that's what that's where that comes from. Because I've spent so much time listening. Like, I can hear and figure out what you want, even though I might not be able to play that same thing. My dad, about 10 years ago, maybe less than 10 years ago, wrote a book um, called... What's it called? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I, I, can't, I, I forget what it's called. Um, playing by the rules. Playing by the rules. That's what it is. And he has a whole music theory based on... Um, well, it's basically the, the chord chart and the circle of fifths. And he teaches you, like, the math... Uh, the structure of everything so that if you know it on one part of the guitar, you know it on the rest of the guitar. And it's not like teaching a song. It's like understanding the chord structure of the song and then being able to apply that to another song and then you automatically know that song. It's a really interesting method and it makes a lot of sense. Um, it doesn't teach you to read music, but it teaches you the theory of how songs are put together and like the mathematical structure that is most of the time repeated. Let's it's how you listen to those goofy mashups where it's like the Green Day song and then like 400 songs that are the same, but it shows you that commonality between music and it helps you to play. It's really good. It's a really it's on Amazon. I'll throw a link in some of our videos or whatever or maybe in the link the uh, um description of this. I'll put a link to it. It's it's pretty it's like 20 bucks. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, man. Mike Ivy's on. Cool. Oh, let's see. If you don't have any other questions, somebody said something. But I don't remember what here. Um, so the RC car on the table right here. This is. Going to beat Matt at Texas Toast Belt Sander. <laughs> I don't know if it is, though. I'm probably going to have to buy another RC car that's faster. I'm just saying. I, um... So, for those of you that may not know... How does my watch register that I'm having a dynamic workout right now? I guess... Are you talking too much? I guess this. Is it an oxygen thing? Maybe it's a... Are you oh. deprivating your oxygen? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, so Matt from Texas Toast Guitars called me a couple weeks ago, and he's like, hey, we're having this class in July, um, and this is something I want to get your input on. I'm having this class in July where we cut out bodies. Do you want to come out for it? And I was like, yeah, it sounds fun. Um... You know, and of course we're mobile, so we could go. Um, it's like a week long, but I'm going to go for the whole time and hang out and stuff. And then we got to thinking, well, he, he can only have like six or seven people in the shop. You know, a hundred bucks a person or whatever to do that. But what if we structured a thing where we had maybe an hour every day that was like, a different subject based on the electrics of the guitar so he you know he's really good with wood matt at texas toast if you've ever watched any of their videos they really do a bunch of neat stuff and 
he's really they're really good about showing like how to cut stuff out how to route stuff how to do finishes and all that kind of stuff it's really cool well you know of course my whole thing is not so much that side as much as like the the electronic side and picking the right pots and picking the right pickups and all that kind of stuff and so we got to talking the other day about maybe doing a a deal where there was an online portion where people could log in like you know uh, kind of like i do with the patreon class but maybe cheaper and shorter and faster kind of thing and where while i was out there we would have like a class every day that was like maybe an hour hour and a half or something and you could log into it sort of kind of like this but I, i'm not really sure exactly yet but um what should we talk about so let's say i was going to do five of those from monday to friday and it was going to be an hour long and it was all going to be based on the electronics in the guitar matt takes care of the wood stuff what would you want if you were building a guitar from scratch or all you had was a body and matt again matt was taking care of all the wood part and the setup and all that stuff and my job was to teach somebody from monday to friday an hour a day everything they needed to know to wire up a guitar what would that be um and if you don't think of it right now, put it in the comments for later. Like, uh, just you know, put it in there for later. Because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just mulling this over in my head and kind of trying to think of how to effectively do it. You know what I mean? Because um, like on our Patreon thing, once a month, right now we're going through guitar setup, but I want to focus on electronic stuff. You know, pots and caps and pickups and all that kind of stuff so that's uh that's something that I'm, I'm i'm working on right now what am i drinking tonight uh this is a uh 12 year bowmore scotch actually <laughs> do you know which days mike learn will also be there i do not i don't know anything about it all i know <laughs> Is that I have a reservation at an RV park on July 5th that's 20 minutes from his shop and on the 6th I'm gonna show up in the morning and it's probably gonna be a free-for-all and I'm gonna have my camera with me and I have no idea beyond that I'm not really sure <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting myself into to tell you the truth but I'm really excited about it because I think those guys are really cool and I think uh, it's worth worth going to hang out me versus Dylan Shred contest. Pfft, you'd win, dude. I don't. No way, man. I've never been a shredder. Do you need a cameraman? Oh, hey, just another vet. Randy. His real name is Randy. Is that who that is? Yeah. I didn't even know. Um, something came up yesterday. <laughs> something came up. Yes. Well, it involves Randy. I had a viewer slash customer slash Patreon patron. Um, no, it's Alan. Oh, is it Alan? He just said it's Alan. Oh, sorry. Oh, Alan. Wrong. Sorry. Well, anyway, I'll still tell you. It's really cool. <laughs> oh, no, he's... um. No, Randy is Git Sergeant. I don't remember. Yeah, Randy is Git Sergeant. Sorry, Alan. I apologize. Um, Alan's local to me. He's he lives right about thirty minutes from where I'm at right now, so I apologize for that. Um. Anyway, I had a really cool customer uh, message me the other day and say, "Hey, you should come out for the Indianapolis 500 in August." So we may try to do that. That'd be really fun because I'm an absolute car freak. You think I like guitars? Cars and motorcycles? Totally other level. Totally other level. Can we talk about the phrase, who's the bird next to you? What is, is that a thing? Who says that? Probably old fashioned dudes that I'm not sure. I'd like to know where that person is from. I've never heard that saying before. Mm -mm. Who's and somebody said his wife, so I'm assuming they're talking about me. So I don't know what his bird means. 
I don't know what that means either. Can somebody define that for me? I don't even know. I don't either. How do I get the most out of the pickups that will be installed in the guitar? Coil splitting, out of phase, switching. Oh, they say he's from the UK. Oh. Thanks, I didn't know. Okay. Makes sense. Somebody said Brit. Okay. Oh, it's Aus an or Australian. Oh, they said Jamaicans say it too. Oh, interesting. I've never heard that. Me either. I mean, we're in like. I mean, not America, in a. So. Not in a normal connotation. Like I've heard of like old people referred to like, like old bird or old bitty or you know like. Right, 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 right. I've heard it like in a negative. Con maybe they meant it in a negative connotation. I don't know, but. Did you just see that latest? Tom L. says, let's play Guess Leslie's accent. <laughs> Does she have an accent? Uh, yes. Who's she Leslie? Has, she has an accent. Oh, my God. That is so He funny. said it's not a bad thing. Thanks, James. <laughs> that is really He's funny. He's the one that originally asked the question. I think Tom L.'s cheating. He started the game, and then he just won the game. He's probably stalking us out on Facebook or something. No. I'm from Georgia. Yep. Not Louisiana. No. You wouldn't be able to understand her if she's from Louisiana. It depends on what part. My family's from Northern, and we say Louisiana. Oh, Louisiana. Not Louisiana. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yep. He said, no, I know people from Georgia. Yep. I don't hear it unless I listen to a recording of myself. Yeah. And then I'm like, who is that? So her job, she actually, like, chats on Skype all day. Not really. But she has to chat with people from all over the world. And it is really funny because people do get, like, taken by... I mean, I got taken by accent. <laughs> Dylan doesn't have a Uper accent. No, I don't. Um, I moved away from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan when I was 17... And I remember even at that time fighting against having that accent because I hated it. Um, but I was. <laughs> he said he was either that or Alabama, but I didn't want to lead off offending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Smart man. Smart exactly. man. Exactly. Um, yeah, I actually um, I moved away from Michigan when I was 17. Uh, I lived in Arizona for a really long time. I lived in New York for a few years, uh, and I've been here for almost eight. So, been here for almost eight. What's up with the Doc's comments? Oh, are they getting retracted? Oh, or I can't see that. Is he saying ugly things? I don't think so. No, he's usually a pretty cool dude. Oh, but retracted means he's taking it back. Oh, does it? I don't know how don't that know. works. You don't see any, like... No, I don't see anything. No, everybody's cool. I don't know. So far? Spilled. Oh, yeah. oh he spelled youper wrong. Yopper. Yeah, I that's saw right. It. That's you okay. did. You did spell youper wrong and I let it fly, but thanks for correcting it. That's pretty awesome. Um, Rich one don't know where. Wait, what? Where at in the youper. I go up to Water Smeet, where we have family friends. Um, I am from Marquette originally. So Waters Meet is closer to Wisconsin on the western side. Mm. Of Which that, is a lot more accent, point. right? Like then yeah, you throw in well, some Wisconsin in the Wisconsin mix. has terrible accents. They like all the girls they're like, no like they put this weird it's terrible. Ugh. The nasally part is weird to me. Like yeah. does everybody there have like a deviated septum and they need like no surgery? Oh my god, or... that's right. Everybody's super nasally, for real. I I'm sorry if you're from there. I'm from there and I it's just something I really I don't identify with it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I still have some really good friends from there. Um and we're actually going to go up there. Uh, I think in June, but it's just really crazy. Um, All right, not guitar. Somebody said, what RC is that? Uh, this is an Axial Wraith 1.9, one-tenth scale crawler. Uh, it's got a three-link front end, four-link rear end. I'm running uh, like a 5,000 milliamp 
uh, three, uh, three cell battery and, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's not fast cause it's a crawler. So, um, it goes real slow actually. Um, but the suspension's really cool and this is, you know, it, it's fun. I need, I do need to get something faster to, oh, so when we go to Colorado, that's the whole thing. Apparently they have some shop toys that they play with and apparently Matt from Texas Toast has a belt sander that he has modified or I don't know, whatever. And I'm supposed to race his belt sander with my RC car, but I think this one's not fast enough. I think I'm going to have to get something faster. So what does a Woody's bar story mean? Is there a bar called Woody's there or is he not talking to us? I, oh, so he said, I bet you've been to Woody's in Ishpeming a couple weeks ago in a video. And I was like, I plead the fifth. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I know some people from there. <laughs> and that is all I'm going to say. Um, I actually just sold my GoPro to a bartender from there. Like right down the street from there. <laughs> um, I sold my GoPro and I bought a DJI Osmo Action. Um, it makes its first appearance in tomorrow's video, um, tomorrow's daily vlog. Yeah. Imagine losing a race to a belt sander. Dude, I know for real. It's going to happen. Is Woody's like Porky's? Um, no, it's way more towny. Oh, dude, those bars in that place, those areas are so towny. Like, what does you, towny mean? Like, okay, there's like, there's like Buffalo Wild Wings is a bar, right? But it's a chain and it's clean and it's light and you can take kids there. The opposite of that would be like, um, I mean, Joe's Underground's a towny bar. Like, okay. nobody knows about it unless you're from there. Okay. Right? Like, even the Highlander, where we're from, is not a towny bar because n people from out of town find out about it. I'm trying to think of something around here that is, like, really... Unless you're from here, you don't know who, what it is. We probably don't know, though. So maybe because, that's why we I know, because we're not that level. Um, so... Where the possessed go to mingle. What? Just Alan said Fox's Lair. Mm -hmm. I would say Fox's Lair too, except she does a great job of advertising. She so. does, and that the place is too classy. Yeah. Like, your feet don't stick to the floor when you walk around. I'm talking, like, gross. You don't want to touch anything, and all they have is, like, old Milwaukee and PBR and stuff. Like, I'm talking, like, the lowest of the low kind of place. Um... I mean, we were talking about no beer selection and sticky floors. We could be talking about Chevy. Ugh, no. <laughs> we're getting too local now. The problem with the sander is it has no steering. Yeah, dude. It's going to be sketch, but it's still going to be fun. I don't even care. I'm excited to, to go. Uh, I'm excited to go. Yep. No, this is fun. Dude, okay, so PBR. I have a thing for PBR. So, um, Leslie and I have been married for a little over seven years. It'll be seven and a half years, I guess, this month, next month. Um, but I have friends from Tennessee and Kentucky that I've known for 20 years when I lived in Arizona. So she's not my first, like, exposure to southern folks and these people drink pbr really seth's brother ah heck yeah man drink pbr and he um i mean he could shoot a squirrel like from 200 yards he's like third place in tennessee like some kind of archery whatever this dude was country and he would shoot and he would drink pbr and he introduced me to pouring like almost a full glass of orange juice and then floating about a half a can of PBR on top of it. Apparently it's called the brass monkey. I didn't, I don't know what it's actually called, but that's what he called it. It's actually really good. As long as it's cold, 
as long as PBR is cold. And if I go into a, a bar and all they have is NASCAR beer. So my, my thing, I'm a little bit of a snob about stuff and I don't like it. So what I will tell the bartender or the waitress, I will be like, I'll be like, look, I want a beer. What do you have? Skip anything that comes on a race car. If it's on a race car, I don't want it. Except if all... And that's when you know if your waitress is going to be good or not. If she's like, what? Like, what do you mean? We what have Bud, mean? Bud Light, Bud Lighter, Bud Lightest. And I'm like, no. <laughs> but if it's nothing but cheap beer and all they have is PBR, I want a frozen mug and I want a PBR really, really cold. And I'm all about some PBR for sure. And actually, I used to throw horseshoes with this guy from Florida when I lived in Michigan. And he all he drank was PBR. And as long as it was really, really cold, that's all that mattered. Oh, my gosh. Hams, Milwaukee's Beast. Uh, my dad used to drink Schlitz when I was a kid. Uh, Schlitz in a 40. I remember that when I was a kid. I didn't drink it. Like, I never, I was never one of those, like, break into the liquor cabinet and drink stuff that you're not supposed to when I was a kid. But my dad used to drink Schlitz. I'll never forget that. It was so nasty. Ugh. So nasty. It rhymes with what it gives you. Uh, yeah, that's all Northeast stuff. Yeah, you're right. Um, and then I used to live in New York, too. And when I lived in New York, I was really broke. Because you have to be really broke because it's so expensive to live there. And we figured out, I had a dorm, dorm size fridge. And we figured out if we took all the shelves out and all the food out, that you could go to the Rite Aid and get Ice House for $5.49 a 12 pack. And you could buy four of them and put 48 beers in a dorm fridge with no shelves and no food. Priority. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was, yep, yeah, that was, uh, Stroh's. Oh my gosh. I had a Stroh's hat when I was a kid. I've never even heard of that. Stroh's beer. It was yellow. The hat was yellow. And it was in the like middle of the 80s. You know, a lot of people make fun of my flat brims because I wear a flat brim cap. But remember back in the 80s when like the, the brim was flat and then people would like bend the hard angle on the sides? That was my Stroh's cap when I was a kid. Because nobody knows how old I am. People just. Which we don't. I don't think. What? Nobody knows how old I am. <laughs> so. Oh, that was my water bottle. Yep. That is so funny. Generic beer. Oh, yeah. Beer. Just beer. Black old and white English. They still make that, don't they? Oh, my gosh. When I lived in Arizona, I worked at a television station for a really short time, and I shot, I shot news. And this guy that worked in our engineering department, like fixed stuff when it was broken, which was always broken because it was a public, it was a, it was a, like a market 76 NBC station, just terrible stuff. We shot on Betamax and uh, stuff is always breaking. This dude is always fixing it. But he would literally buy an old English 40 and just drink the whole thing. And he, we wouldn't even be able to tell. He was like six feet tall, six, five or something ridiculous. Duff. Mm. No, nope. nobody. Mickey's big mouth. Oh my gosh. Ugh. I got stories about Mickey's big mouth, but I can't tell them on the internet. <laughs> How come I can't scroll past a certain number of comments? I don't huh? know. Do they max out? I was trying to scroll back up to where everybody was telling us their ages. Um, cause JC said, I think Dylan is five years older than me, but I can't scroll back up to see what his yeah, age JC, was. Yeah, JC, how old are you? Put that, I can't see it either. It went, it went, um, oh, wait a minute. If I, he's right. If you flip it to live chat. Oh. From top chats. Oh. No, it still doesn't go back that yeah, it far. it just gets stuck, right? Yeah. JC, how old are you? He says he's, I'm five years. Yeah, I don't tell people how old I am on the internet, actually. 
That is one. Are you not going to confirm or deny? I'm 28. I'm not going to confirm or deny. Then why'd you ask him? I just want to see. If he was right and not let him know if he's right or wrong. Well, I'm older than you. He I'll, said that. Yeah, I will tell you. I will say that. I am older than you. By a fair amount. <laughs> the age thing's funny. So the reason I don't bring up my age on the internet literally is because in the industry that I'm in, again, this goes back to like the average age of people that think they know everything about guitars, um, like in groups and stuff, is way older than me. And But I always get this like, you young whippersnapper, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, but you I am a better accent for that, but I, yeah, You're I am really not young. as young as people think I am. And so that's why I don't, and I've been doing, you know, it's really funny. Like I'll say something and I'm like, I remember 30 years ago when I had this guitar, blah, blah, blah. And, and they're people like, are what? like, what, how can you even be that old? You know, or, you know, we have a daughter in college, <laughs> you know, like it's weird. Like people don't. It's funny because they do not, they are like, I can't even believe it. I can't believe it either. It's okay. It is a little weird still. <laughs> um, I should tell you all while we're chatting. Oh, what time is it? Oh, we're good. I was going to keep it to an hour. Um, I should tell you all, Japan. Oh, yeah. Fat Philosopher is a regular. Thanks, dude. Uh, all, from all the way around the world. Um. Do they still bottle Rolling Rock? Oh, yeah. Bottled in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Um, when I lived in New York, we drank that a lot. Um, so I was going to give you a little rundown of our plan for the summer. If you live in the United States, it would be fun. And, I'm, and I can't make any promises because the way this year has been with everything, we had a whole itinerary. We were going to go to Formula One. We were going to, I mean, we're going to do all this we had a huge amount of trips planned and all this stuff, obviously, because we live in a motorhome now. Um, and it all got thrown out the window, and we kind of had to start over from scratch. Um, so I can't really make any promises, like I'm going to be here in a certain month or whatever. But we do have a couple things penciling in, and I want to tell you about them, because it would be cool... I'm not like, you know, a bajillion follower YouTube channel. So I'm not, it's, this is not like a too big for my britches thing or anything. I'm not saying like, I want to do a meetup and have thousands of people. That's not what I'm talking about. I just want to meet some of you. It would be really cool um, to hang out as we travel and meet as many people as possible. Um, so I'll try to give you, this is what I know so far. The week after July 4th, 5th to the 12th, we will be in Denver. Um, backing up from that, well, next week we'll be in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Memorial Day will be in Northern Florida. And then we're going to start going, and then we'll be here for a couple weeks, and then the the month of June will be the Midwest uh, and Michigan. July then will be Colorado. And depending on what happens with Indianapolis, the Indy 500, that's too early to tell. So we don't, this is kind of where I don't know anything. I want to go to the Indianapolis 500, and that is August 23rd or something. And if that happens, then we will have to beeline it out to northern. Then we will be in northern California for the be beginning of September, basically. So that just gives you a little bit of a structure. Seeing Rich is saying um, Illinois will still be locked down in June. So just drive on by. And I doubt Michigan will be any better by then. So, yeah, we have to be flexible. It's, yeah, we really have to be flexible. I mean, it's... We don't know, you know, but I, I wanted to just tell you because it would be fun to meet up with as many people as possible. I, but like, again, I just don't know. And 
it just depends to what the format of our videos takes um, and how real time I can keep everybody up. This whole, uh, yeah, it's a great time to buy gas for that thing. You're not kidding, dude. Um, but to go nowhere. It's for real, man. It sucks. I mean, we we bought this thing on February 29th. We've taken it to Florida once. Um, and then we take it to dump our tanks once a week. We've bought three tanks of gas for the Jeep in the last six weeks, probably. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just... Uh, just crazy. So, yeah, gas is crazy. It's a dollar. The last time I put gas in the motorhome, which was like a week and a half ago, um, it was a buck twenty-three a gallon. Uh, I think it was a buck forty when I put gas in the Jeep the other day. So it's cheap. The wine is gone. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, Mike Ivy has seen our Jeep in person, obviously, because he's picked up pickups from me. Mike Ivy is also local to me, so hello. Yep, it's uh, it's crazy. Three seventeen in California. That's still low, though. Different places. See that two fifty six and three seventeen. Mm hmm. I think it depends where. Yeah. For sure. There was something else I was going to tell them tonight, too. I guess that's it. I, I, I really want, like I said, oh, I know what it was. So, you know, I've been doing this video every day thing. It is really hard. Uh, really hard. But I do, and I want to get your opinion on it. I do like, part of me is like, I want these videos to be so good. Um, but part of me is also like, I really, really enjoy like the lower production and just kind of the realness of it. Um, I hate to say it, but I mean, <laughs> and we need to like tag him so he'll come and watch this and then share my channel. That's selfish. But I, I love... Cletus McFarland vlog style. I like how he just goes through, this is what we're doing, and here we're doing it, and we're doing the stuff, and this is it. And it's pretty loose, and it's just a GoPro, and he doesn't put any post-production into anything. And I really like that feel, because I feel like it's really real. Um, and you can still make it nicer than that, and still have that amount of realism. Um... And there's a lot of other channels like that. I'm really getting tired. Okay, I'll, I'll just be really honest. I'm really getting tired of just sitting and talking about guitar stuff. Um, you can only talk about paper and oil caps so many times. You can only talk about how to set the action on a guitar so many times. So I'm trying to figure out how to keep the content of the channel what it is. But... I have way more personality than just sitting and talking to a camera. And I have way more interest and way more, there's way more going on here, obviously. And that's why I wanted to do this um, and hang out with you. And so the, the whole vlogging every day thing was like, let me just hit this hard, see how it pokes my imagination in a different direction. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, um, see what the viewers think of it um does it grow do people watch it and people are watching them so i mean our views are up and they were way down before this because of covid19 so i don't know man um cars and guitars see i know and that's the thing i think about that like the like um dan from guns and guitars like that's a really his format is really kind of fun um, and I do like that. And for me, it's cars. It really is. It's, it's cars and motorcycles, dude. It's, that is, 
I love guitars, but things that go, pff, not even close. And the reason, honestly, one of the reasons why I bought this is because while I do play music sometimes, I enjoy guitars and they're fun, but this was just like a completely mindless, off in a completely different direction hobby. You know what I mean? And it freshens me up for when I start up the camera at eight o'clock on Monday morning, like I will tomorrow. It freshens me up having done something more mindless that has, doesn't have anything to do with it, you know, in my spare time. Um, I just want that fresher feel. I just want to freshen it up. Um, we're 600 videos into this now, and I'm like, you know. So suggestions from you would be cool, and requests. And like, yeah, if you want to see this, let me know. Do we take the Jeep out and uh, do some rock crawling and then go to the top of a mountain and talk about some guitar stuff? I don't know. Ooh. You know what? Yeah, like, I don't know. Do we go out in the woods somewhere? I mean, if you're going to keep, like, a vlog style, it's going to happen eventually anyway. We just can't go anywhere right well, now. Well, I guess that's part of it, too. Yeah. I'm, part of it is maybe I'm just getting stir-crazy. Yeah. Because my, I, what I imagine with this, and actually with the Music and Mascara channel, with our channel that we have together, is talk about our traveling and work it all together, but we haven't been able to do it. So, it, yeah, maybe it, part of it is just being stir-crazy, you know? Um, yes, do that. Just keep all your videos like this, more real and more casual. I think so. I think it's going to go that way. I think it's going to... I think it's going to go that way. I think it's going to get a little bit more... I'm a little too much of a camera junkie for it to get super loose and not edited and really... I don't want it bad. <laughs> like I still want it really good. Um, you know, that's why I bought a new camera because I didn't really like the GoPro as much. Um, GoPros are great. But the color science behind them is... I don't, don't like it. I don't like the colors and I don't like how it edits. I don't like how GoPros edit when you mess with the picture. This DJI already i mean day one i'm just like this thing is awesome um and if you're friends with me on facebook i put this in this rc car and drove it around today and the stabilization is amazing too live morning coffee vlog so we have we used to do uh i used to cook breakfast every day on facebook um and that was on my Facebook personal page. And what's really funny, it's funny that you say that because was it this morning? No, it was yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. Yesterday morning, I literally set up all the cameras and said, I am going to cook breakfast and talk about guitar stuff. And that is going to be Monday's video. And it would have worked, but I was... The guitar stuff actually wasn't prepared very well, and I just wasn't ready for it. Um, the sub I didn't I didn't like the technical side of the subject matter of the guitar stuff that I was talking about. The breakfast was amazing. Um, you still went live. I still went live on Facebook, but I didn't make it into a YouTube production. So I think breakfast and guitars is definitely coming. I think the idea is. I want to go do fun things, share those fun things with you, and then make sure that it frames around teaching something or sharing something that is valuable content that it is Dylan Talks Tone content. And hopefully some of these vlogs have done that. You know, like we've been doing random stuff surrounding the vlogs. But we've also said, okay, this is how a humbucker is wired. And this is how you know, even though we're like opening packages and doing other random things. Um, we might go out and take the RC car out and then play around for a few minutes and talk about uh, something guitar related. And still, so that video is still valuable 
in your library of stuff about guitars. I, that's what I hope. Um, One minute if you're keeping it at an hour, but if you're not, that's fine too. Anyway. That's what I'm... That's what I'm hoping. And I don't know... Dylan talks breakfast. <laughs> I think Mike has seen some of my Facebook stuff before. P90 over easy. I guess Ivan is out. All right, Ivan. Ivan just ordered uh, from me a loaded pick guard for a strat. So that's on the way to him. You need guests. So guests are a thing. Why? What's wrong with me? You're awesome. Um, guests are a thing that we've tossed around and messed with, and I would like to mess with it some more. And as we collaborate with other YouTubers and other shops and other, I have a concept where I, once we can travel, one of the things I would like to do is stop places on the way, you know, like when we go through Oklahoma again, stop and see, uh, you know, Stop and see Keeley, you know, Robert Keeley again and be like, hey, what's your latest thing? And shoot a video at Robert Keeley's and then maybe go to Creation Music Company and talk about pedal boards and then go to, you know, um, I've, I've been seeing people that I know on Facebook and like, you know, on Instagram and stuff and being like, hey, I need to call them up and maybe. And I, I've, I've arranged some stuff um, with other pickup builders. I'm working on a thing with... Um, with uh, Tim McNally from McNally Pickups in Canada to do like a, a distance guest Zoom sort of thing. I actually have a video coming out and maybe I'll put it out this week um, from a pickup company who's making pickups that are completely different technology than a regular pickup. And we did an interview and stuff and I recorded it. And so maybe we'll put that out. So I am trying to do the guest thing, but um, I just haven't figured out my flow with it and how I want it to be mine. You know, I don't know. I haven't um, figured out my flow. RV vloggers are big also. Yeah. So what it sounds like is we basically just need to start traveling. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. You know, more, do fun things, traveling. Yeah. Those are top of my list. Do fun things and then talk about guitar stuff. That's not at the top of my list, but it's your thing. No, I know. And apparently you need more interesting guests, so then we'll you, work on that. Maybe you need a parent, we need a, a more interesting guests. More drinks? Interview. More yeah. drinks. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Earthquaker is in Akron, Ohio. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of people that I would literally just tour around and stop. Or at least whoever's on my way, do my best to stop and shoot and say hi. So I guess that's part of it is just the boredom of being stuck here right now. So, um, so the RV vlogger thing... Um, youtube.com slash music mascara with nothing is music mascara um, is our other YouTube channel and that's where a lot of that stuff lives like the RV how to stuff and the beginner stuff and it actually it goes back and tells the whole story I mean we literally stood in our driveway the day we decided to sell our house and be like today we decided to sell our house and we're going to sell everything we're going to sell all of our possessions and we're going to, we don't know what's going to happen. Because we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and that's very real. Like, we did not stage any of that. That was, like, very real. Um, the whole process, selling our house, having all the yard sales, having a liquidator come, get the rest of the stuff. Lived with her in-law, lived with my her parents for a few months, and then bought a motorhome. So that whole process of the last, that we started that last, almost a year ago. Um, to this point, that's all on that channel and you can go check it out and that's going to continue to, to grow. Um, but we will probably bring some more lifestyle stuff over to the guitar side. I, I just, I'm just kind of tired of the, I'm just kind of tired of just the, hey, I'm going to talk about guitar stuff today. This is what we're going to talk about. And I know that there's going to be a lot of pushback in the comments about I did not come here to see blah 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 but one thing I've learned and the lesson that I've learned even making this video tonight when somebody gave me pushback on it like you shouldn't do that 
is if you don't like what you're making, it's going to suck. It's not going to be as good and people aren't going to connect with it as well. And then they're not going to watch it and it's not going to matter anyway. So like <laughs> you got to like what you are doing. And so I want to do stuff I like and talk about guitars. I think that's what's going to have to happen. So, and I'm, this vlog thing this month, doing a video every day is kind of getting my gears going for that. Which so. is the point. It yeah. should be to inspire I you. wanted it to do that. Yeah. Like, just kind of kick me in the butt in a different direction, inspire me, to, and like force me to like produce a bunch of different stuff and try different stuff. And, you know, you didn't even watch the one where we went and dumped all the poop. I was there. But it's good. Like the way we shot it, it, it like it turned out good, and I was proud of it. Very oxymoron kind of statement here. I was proud of it. Like I, you know, it was a good video. I thought it was great. You know, and and people dug it. Like they stuck around and was like, oh, it's because there was a poop emoji. Because it was a poop emoji and the poop emojis. So if you're starting a YouTube channel, a poop emoji in a thumbnail win every time. I don't know why, but people will click on a poop emoji. It's for real. It is for real. You guys, thanks for hanging out. This has been super fun. Um, <laughs> Pooping guitars. Pooping guitars. Is that like... <laughs> thanks for coming and, to not, and not talking about guitars with me, even though we talked about guitars like most of the time. That was what I was expecting. And I... I just am I'm glad to have you and I'm grateful that you all come and watch this stuff and I'm grateful that um, beyond the views and the clicks and the stats because I hate it but I am like a stat junkie beyond that uh, I am very grateful and thankful to everybody that it's becoming a community and I'm also stoked that in the comments section at Dylan Talks Tone on 600 videos, there's maybe a dozen jerks out of 3 million or whatever views we have. You could really count in a, just a few minutes the amount of people that are really, you know, really angry. I think we've built a really cool positive environment for people to come and talk about this stuff. And uh, I hope it continues that way. And I hope that's the kind of environment you guys like. And I hope that it, it works because it's just super fun to do it. And, and to, cause I, I get a little criticism once in a while, like you're removing comments. You're no, I'm not actually uh, YouTube does that automatically sometimes. Um, but I don't really delete comments unless they're really, like, hateful. Like, you know, like, YouTube was probably going to delete it anyway, so maybe I did. But uh, if you have a different opinion than me, you know, we all have to have opinions that are different than ours. Otherwise, we never really grow. So it's good to learn from each other and that kind of stuff. Um, but it's, it's overall positive, and I love that. So thank you very much. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I hope everybody has a good week. And uh, stay tuned. Now I have to go make a thumbnail and finish editing the video for tomorrow. In fact, I tell you what, you guys can all be on it. Let's do this. This is going to be the conclusion of the video for tomorrow. We'll just do it right now. Hey, what's up? Or no. It's already in the middle of a video, so we don't have to do that part. <laughs> so, uh, we are tagging this on the end of the vlog. Because we're live right now. Hanging out. Not talking about guitars, but talking about guitars. Uh, Leslie's with me. We've got about, looks like, 48 other people right now. And there was more than that earlier. Um... And so that's that's what we're doing. It's been really fun. We were just talking about how this whole vlog thing has been really inspiring. Um, I'm not supposed to plug anything on my live channel tonight. Somebody requested that on the live feed. 
So over here, not over here, over here, um, don't forget to go to dylancontest.com and enter to win the guitar, the 40,000 subscriber guitar that we worked on in this vlog. Uh, make sure you go to Dylan Talks Tone, uh, patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone and sign up for our class. Because remember, the fourth Sunday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to do a live class. And the next one is about nuts. We talked about that in this vlog also. The cool part about this is, is that there's five Sundays in this month, which means that the fifth Sunday, we're going to do a bonus class for anybody who is currently enrolled. So I think that's really, really cool. So patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. We're going to talk about nuts. And then on that, we might actually put to the Patreon um, community what the fifth free class should, the fifth weekend free class should be about. And maybe we'll either have a free for all or we'll have an FAQ or we'll have something specific that you requested. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for hanging out and we will see you in tomorrow's vlog. There you go. You were all a part of it. Thanks for hanging out. You guys will be so meta when they can watch They'll it be like, and Wait, know that what? I was there. Yep. And you'll see from the other side because I don't, I didn't use my front screen, but whatever. Oh. Uh, was I recording that whole time? Are you kidding me? I was. Okay. <laughs> Actually, crap. I don't know if I was. We might have to do this again. Literally, this is how my day has gone. Hang on, let me check. It has been the longest repeat day. That is so true. No, it's there. Yep, and you'll see from the other side because I don't. That's the end, right? No, that is not. Started recording. Okay, we're gonna do it again. You're kidding me. We gotta do it again. Really? I can't believe people are still watching. I, sorry, guys. But we got to do this. We have to. Uh, so, say hey. so here's what we got going. This is the end of the day. This is Sunday night. We're doing this live, hanging out, not talking about guitars, but talking about guitars, but not really talking about guitars kind of deal. And we got uh, less people now because this is take two because I forgot to hit record. Because we said bye like three Cause times. Because we said bye like three times already. Um, don't forget to go to dylancontest.com, enter to win the 40,000 subscriber guitar that we worked on in this vlog. Uh, and make sure you go to patreon.com slash dylantalkstone and enter, I mean, uh, en enroll that for that class. Fourth Sunday of every month. Um, five weekend months, such as May, this month, you will get a free class the weekend following. So that extra weekend, that extra Sunday, we're going to do an extra class. Um, we'll probably open it up to people and see what they want to learn. We'll just kind of keep it a free for all. It'll be awesome. Uh, so that's it. I guess we will see you tomorrow on tomorrow's vlog and say hello to all the people on the other side of that phone <laughs> who are watching us on YouTube live right now, but not really live for you. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you. Okay, I think it worked that time. I can't believe people are still watching. You guys, this is awesome. I love you all. Have a great night. And, uh, oh, we will see you later. But I actually have to come up here and press stop. We'll see you.